Wow, guys. Um, so today is actually the last uh, anchor that we're going to be meeting for this year in person. And so um, mixed emotions about that. Of course, we've got you know, great things in the weeks ahead. Um, and so I'm just glad, thankful for everyone that's able to be here in person. Uh, everyone joined us online uh, this morning. So glad to have you guys as well. And, and uh, so we, one of the things we want to do um, a little different this morning is uh, we have several guys um, that help to put this together every single week. Uh, we've got some guys that actually attend church at Battle Creek, and, and they're so gracious to let us use their facility. Uh, we've got guys that help coordinate our speakers throughout the year. Um, there's, there's guys who help with the hospitality uh, that, that we typically have, um, guys who help with the video, uh, the audio. Um, for those who don't know, these all go on YouTube. Uh, in the days ahead, so you can always catch it or send it to someone if there's a, a special message that you want to make sure it gets out. And so there's a team of guys who help to put an anchor together um, every single week. And so one of the things we want to do this morning is uh, we just want to give an opportunity for, for each of them to share uh, share something on the heart just about the anchor. And so uh, we're going to get to that in just a moment. Um, I first wanted to say... Uh, uh, Frank uh, is unable to be with us this morning. Um, uh, he's had to take care of some things with his kids. Um, and so I'm just asking that you guys will lift him up and bury him and his family uh, to some challenges that they're facing as a family right now. And so um, be mindful of that. Um, we will not be meeting in person, like I said, the remainder of the year. Uh, we are still prayerfully considering what it means to look like. I mean, obviously, there's so many unknown factors happening right now. Uh, so as we move into January, I would just encourage you guys to uh, to make sure you're on that email list. Uh, we'll be sending out emails weekly uh, to just stay in communication. Uh, but um, but we're we're carefully considering what what January needs to look like. Um, so there's a chance we might be going back virtually. Uh, but um, but just be looking for that in your email. And uh, so this morning, uh, there's there's several guys that can't be with us, um, unfortunately. But uh, but we do have Aaron. Nick, uh, Greg, and myself here this morning, and so we're just going to uh, give them a minute to share, and I hope that it encourages you guys, and, and you guys can just grasp a little bit more uh, about who we are as a ministry and just about uh, what we get to do here on Friday mornings. And so I'm going to ask Aaron to, to kick us off this morning. Good morning. Um, so... What Frank asked us to share about, I feel like this is really loud. Do I need to move it away a little bit? Okay. So one of the things he asked us to share about is just God's faithfulness. And, um, and I, there's so many, so many things I want to share about the way that God's been faithful in my life. And there's just, there's, there's one particular area of my life over the last, that I've lived out over the last eight years, actually. Uh, that builds up to where I am today and showing how faithful God has been in my life. And uh, to give a little bit of background, going back to 2012, so really about this time, uh, literally eight years ago, uh, I just, you know, I've been through the journey. I've been involved in, in, in the journey for about four years at this point. And I was at a point where I just felt like I needed to experience God in a new way. And, uh, and, and that was my prayer. I just remember distinctly, vividly, praying to God and saying, God, I want to experience you in a different way. I want to experience you for myself. Uh, I don't want to just have this testimony of who I think you are, who I believe you are, what the Bible says you are, what somebody else says you are. I want that experience for myself. And I didn't know what that would look like. That was the end of 2012. And in March of 2013, I discovered some things about my wife, and um, it began a process of separation and eventually divorce. And that was not what I was expecting, you know. Um, and it's, so it, it really put me into a tailspin. Uh, I learned so much about myself, though. Uh, God showed me so many things uh, that I needed to work on, ways that I needed to be healed. And he was faithful in all of that. Uh, and I'm, I'm a different man than I was at that point in my life. And, but over the next, you know, six years, seven years now, uh, from that time, 
uh, I've been walking through this journey of, well, God, what do you do? What do you want to do? I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of doubts. I had depression. Uh, I almost uh, couldn't believe the word anymore. I was, I was reading it just to read it, and it's like, but I didn't really believe it. And so my faith was really wavering, um, and, and it was really just about, you know, questioning God. Like, well, why didn't you come through for me? You know, why didn't you do this? Where's my life going now? What am I supposed to do now? You know, and it's, it's just, and it was just this, this constant, uh, you know, pursuing God in a sense, but also just doubting and questioning a lot. And I was struggling with why. And so one of the things that I wanted to share this morning and just something that I learned about myself that I think pertain to a lot of men in general is that we always want to try to understand why. And maybe it goes to all people, but I think men generally like to figure things out. They like to understand why. They like to understand, you know, what's behind something and figure it out. And and that's what I was doing. I was trying to understand why, <laughs> did that happen? why didn't that happen? Why didn't you do this, God? Um, why, why is why is this tearing my family apart? You know, all these types of questions. And the scripture that God gave me in, in the midst of that was Proverbs 20, 24. And it says, the Lord corrects our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? And, you know, there's other, there's other scriptures, Proverbs 3, you know, 4, 5, and 6, right? It says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Um, there's another verse, uh, in, I forget, Philippians or so, that says, you know, that, that he, his peace surpasses all understanding, right? So that means that we can have peace without understanding, right? And so there's these, all these scriptures where, and so I think that's the main thing that I wanted to share as far as, uh, I think, a life lesson for us is we don't have to understand everything along the way. The Lord is directing our steps. And, and so in the midst of all of this, um, God gave me another verse, um, this, uh, Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. And it says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. And this was, this was back, you know, 2013, 2014. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. And so I felt like that was God giving me a prompt. And, uh, and so walking through these last seven years, when you come to this year, uh, about this time last year, it was November of last year, uh, I met somebody. And I actually met her uh, a couple of years earlier, but we began dating in November of last year. And, uh, and in October of this year, I proposed to her, and we're getting married. <laughs> and I just give him the glory for it because he's been faithful. I mean, that is a, that is something that I'm just so excited about, and it is a it is a testament to his faithfulness. But I also say that God's been faithful with my heart, you know, in all of that. You know, I mean, I'm transformed, I'm changed, I'm a new man of faith. Is so much stronger and so much different than it was even in 2012 and in 2012 i thought my faith was strong and god has just kind of flipped it around and turned it upside down and, and really i think changed the basis of my faith that my faith was not in what he can do not in what uh happens in my life but is it you know it's this solely in him it's who he is and that he's my god and he's a faithful god and he's good and so, um, and so what was, what was cool about all that, you know, my prayer for 2012 was that I would experience him in a new way. And, and that's what he's done. That's how he's been faithful. And I came across, I read Job uh, at a time that I was really down and depressed, which seems ironic probably, but I wanted to relate to Job. You know, I wanted to understand how did he deal with all this, you know? And at the end of Job, this is what it says. He said, Job 42, verse 5, he said, I have only heard about you before, but now I see you with my eyes. And that's, that's, that's the story I have. Because Job, if you know, was, uh, God said he was blameless. You know, so you've got this picture of Job. Like, man, he's this 
spiritual, strong faith guy, right? And that's who I thought he was. And at the end of Job, after all the suffering that he went through, he said, I've only had heard about you before. Now I have seen you with my own eyes. So my encouragement to you is that whatever trial, whatever suffering, you know, may come your way or what you've been through, when God is faithful. God will show you who he is. He wants you to know that. And uh, he's good. And he's going to be good to you. So just stay the course. Stay close to him. He's faithful. He'll come through. Great start. Apparently, they don't care about me. Man, I just sing. I know you're supposed to talk to. Um, I have this lamp that every Christmas time I pull out and set up. It's a round, old lamp, and it's this greenish blue. To it. And painted on this lamp is a little town of Bethlehem and hills on the sides with shepherds and angels. And it's the softest, most beautiful glow you've ever seen when you turn this real low dim lamp on. It's not made to light up the house, it's just made to light up the painting. And unbelievably peaceful kind of thing. It kind of harkens like you know, one of those hand painted Christmas cards that you see. Um, but I'm reminded. That against the backdrop, that peaceful night is against the backdrop of a Roman occupation in Israel at the time, where people are trying to overthrow the government, where plagues and famine have covered the land, where pretty soon you're going to have a king try to kill all the babies. Unbelievably violent, unbelievably scary. And yet you have this one little ounce of peace and, and you have angels who are proclaiming to someone in the midst of a very scary time like peace on earth like this is a good thing this is what God has ordained this is what God is bringing he's doing something new and different for you um, this year has been absolutely chaotic for everyone uh, I don't think there's one of us who would say that we're the same person or we're in the same boat now as we were nine, 10, 11 months ago. Uh, pandemic aside, we still had chaos going on all over the world, politics and everything else. Uh, but what I think this has done just a little bit for us, this pandemic, this chaos that we're dealing with, is I think it's caused us to slow down and touch, to examine some of the stuff that we can live without to um, reevaluate what we want to put our focus on and where we spend our time and where we spend our money. Oh, don't get me wrong, I don't think this pandemic is a good thing, but I think that there's some good that is slowly coming out of it that we're going to carry forward. So a year from now, two years from now, we have a vaccine, we have, we have whatever it is. We've still learned some stuff about ourselves that maybe for 20, 30, 40 years, we'd assume that we were wrong. And it's caused us to change the way we live our lives. In chaos and pandemic is this little bit of light, this little bit of peace. And we're going into a season now which is traditionally unbelievably busy. Traffic is insane. Turn on the 71st and you're there for three hours. Um, we're going to Christmas party to Christmas party. We're trying to get POs closed for the end of the year. We're trying to lock clients in for the end of the year. We got family travel. I mean, unbelievable chaos in what's supposed to be a joyful time. And that's what our December is. I'm going to hear anything like me. That's what our December is. And this year, it's all shut down. We're not traveling. We're trying to avoid going out. We're trying to avoid the traffic. We're shutting down Christmas parties. We're trying to lock stuff in over the phone. And it's turned into what is traditionally one of the most chaotic times of the year. has turned into, well, the calendar's kind of cleared out, doesn't it? So I just want to encourage you this month that maybe in the midst of this chaos, we can find just a little bit of peace in the chaos. Not in place of, it's not getting rid of, but it's just a little bit of peace in that chaos. 
a little bit of time where we can kind of recenter ourselves. Uh, maybe focus a touch more on the reason we actually have this whole season. And we say that every year, but I mean, this year, the earmuffs are on, right? Like everything's a little better, everything's a little quieter uh, outside and in your head. Too. So just want to encourage us as we kind of start into this month, we have, you know, three and a half weeks left um, of this year. Nothing's going to magically change on January 1st, I wish it would. Um, but as we go into really the next three weeks, we just want to encourage you guys to um, find us that little bit of peace. Uh, focus just a touch more on what God is teaching you about yourself and about what he wants you to do. Um, center yourselves with your family. Uh, just be very intentional, I can think, work uh, as we go forward. I think one of the best faith exercises we can have is looking back on what God's brought us through and who he's turned us into versus who we were before. And I think maybe more than almost like a year I can think of, I can see that happen in nine, ten months maybe. You know, sometimes you look back and you're like, well, five years ago I did this or I was into that or this is what my life revolved around. Well, ten months ago, we were all a little different. Uh, so use that as a faith exercise to this month. Be intentional about um, examining where you've been brought from uh, and where he wants you to go forward. Uh, and I can say, you just embrace that piece this month. You know, take, take some time um, and really focus on that. So appreciate you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I will share some things real quickly um, why I like the anchor, why I like all of this. Um, it's sad when I have a, a Christmas party to get back together and say that uh, one last time to everybody in the room, uh, our families and all that, but um, we have this moment now. And I just want to say that uh, this, this fellowship that we have at anchor, you know, it's in person, it's, it's online, um, and it's just all that. And so in person, online, um, and then just what's outside of that. Well, right. Every one of us will reach out to each other outside of this. I want to encourage that beyond today. Because everybody needs that um, that touch point, that encouragement, uh, just like we have here, right? At your anchor, we, we stop, we pray. How are you doing? What's going on in your life? What's your praises? You need to share that. And I think that's, that's a calibration. It's a recalibration of what we need to be doing. Because this world can um, take our focus away from what's important. And what's really important is that peace, we can't bring peace. We're not going to have peace. I just heard that this morning. Uh, this morning I was talking about Zachariah on the drive in. And he was sharing that uh, Christ is the only one who can bring peace. We can't. Governments can't do it. Um, groups of people can't do it. You know, we have little pockets of it. But what we have here is a pocket of that fellowship and that recalibration of knowing, let's keep our focus on what's important and not get distracted by the, the business of the season or, or work or, you know, the transition of, of, of governments, uh, one party to the next, uh, the chaos in the world, no matter what happens, we need to have our focus on Christ. And I think to me, this allows that to happen here at Anchor. And that's so important. You know, just have that peace. Uh, I was talking to my wife last night, she was upset. You know, this time of year, it's less stress. You know, as I kept asking her, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" And it finally came out after she said, "There's nothing else." It's, it, it's just she's worn down. She feels like this Christmas isn't going to unfold like she wants it to. You know, this, this vision we had. In the end, it's like you know, this we're get, we're getting stressed out by the things we would like to happen. The vision of Christmas, what it should be, and really what it's all about is is Christ. And our relationship with Christ, that He came to this world to, to save us, to bring that peace, to start that process, and for us to know that He died and came back and will come back again. That's the ultimate peace, and that's our focus. So, as we end this, um, just I thank you for each one of you for being here, and I, I talked to each of you guys in different ways and different different links. I mean, for John, I know we, we talked a few years back, but I was encouraged because we had a family member who. Um, was going through some hard times, and you can relate to that story. And we prayed about it, and we shared some stories. And 
was awesome because it didn't just end here. I was able to go and share that with my family in Texas, and, and that helped them. They were encouraged to know that somebody else has been through this and they made it. Um, so I think that's pretty awesome. There's all kinds of stories about things like that. Um, so just continue to to meet together, whether we can't do it in person right now, then call somebody. Know a couple guys, reach out. Just check on them. I mean, there's nothing that I appreciate more than uh, kind of being in a, a lull. Somebody texts me or calls me and says, how you doing? And I will admit that it may take two or three times that, to hear that question for you. I'll open up and say, this is what's going on. Most of the time, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> but in reality, we all need that, right? Oh, I mean, Christ uh, asked Peter uh, three times, you love me, right? For a reason. But it's the third time. So don't give up. Keep persevering. And, uh, love on each other. So thank you, guys. <laughs> You know, it was about two years ago, I was in a place in my life where I was really praying to God that he would help me discover a place of men who knew the same God that I was experiencing at the time. Um, I spent a lot of time in men's breakfast, you know, men's breakfast and, and different, you know, different places to go uh, in the mornings, um, but never really sensed a, a level of love and transparency and relationship. Uh, and it was it was something that I was in a place where I was just praying about God just what's it look like? What's it look like? And there was a, a lunch I was having with a dear friend of mine, Tommy. He, uh, he said, you know, you gotta come with me Friday morning and do this thing called the anchor. And uh, and I showed up here and I came in the doors right back here for the first time two years ago. And I had just an overwhelming sense of men who were real, who were transparent, who loved one another. It was so unique from anything I'd ever dealt with or experienced in the past. And that's what really drew me to the anchor to begin with, um, was, was that, and getting to hear from different men week after week after week, share their stories, share their testimonies, share how God has impacted their life on a daily basis. And, and I just, I crave that more and more. More. The more we spend with God, the more we, we seek Him, the more He shows Himself to us, and the more we desire to go deeper and deeper and deeper with Him every single week. And that's what the anchor does. The anchor helps men stay secure firmly in position. And when I looked up, I looked up this week the definition of anchor. Uh, we think of anchor as typically the anchor that holds the boat in place, um, but we also see anchor uh, used as a verb. And the very definition of anchor is to secure something firmly in place. That's what we're doing as men. We're securing ourselves firmly in the position of, of Christ and our relationship with him. And that's what we get to do in this place every single week. And it takes me to, it takes me to a story that's found in three of the Gospels. Jesus had shared and he sent the disciples away in the boat. Uh, to, to go across the water, and Jesus went away to pray, and, and the men were out on the boat, and the waves began to come, and, and they were having a difficult time on the water. And they saw an image appear, and the disciples said, Fuck, is that a ghost? And Peter, Peter's the one that said, Lord, is that you? responded with one word. Come. Yeah. Come. It was like a follow-up or something like that. Yeah. Peter climbed out of the boat. I don't have any problems. Onto the water. I don't have any problems with being tied anymore. This story kind of helps me, in my mind, grasp the analogy of anchor because we have two different forms of anchor. I we have the anchor that secures the boat in place. We have the anchor that we secure firmly or position in Christ. So my question to myself and the question I challenge you guys with this morning is, are you living a life that you're anchored securely and safely in the boat? Or are you living a life where you're anchored 
securely looking at Jesus, following him on the water. I want to be the person that anchors focused on Christ, not safely in the book. There's a moment where Peter, I'll share this with you. There's a moment in man's life, there's a moment in Peter's life, where he stepped out of that boat, Jesus had, had said that simple word, come. But he had to make a decision. He climbs out of the boat, take his fingers off the edge of the boat. Personal abandonment, absolute trust. How many times do we, we move towards Christ? We move towards okay. Christ. We start learning. We start We grow. Are good? Is that right? We never let go of the boat. We still hold on. Jesus says, come. So I think about anger. I think about the fact that we get to come. We get to come to a place where we get to be in close proximity with Christ, with fellow believers, men who are seeking after God and that are choosing to be anchored on Him, not anchored in the security of the boat. That's all this one. Um, if you have not had a chance to read Journey to the Inner Chamber, Hi. Uh, before you leave this room, come see me. I want to get you a copy of it. Um, I believe everybody read it. Uh, there are several men, as I mentioned, that weren't able to be here this morning um, to serve on this anchor team. And uh, so next time you see them, um, if you know who they are, appreciate them.